Hi, and welcome to the Battery Masters podcast, which is your resource to become an expert in battery technology. I'm your host, Akshay Gill, and today we're going to talk about the memory effect in batteries, specifically in lithium ion batteries. So, what is the memory effect? The term memory effect comes from the presence of a memory inside batteries that was initially found in nickel cadmium type cells and early age nickel metal hydride type cells. What was seen is that if the cell is discharged again and again to a specific percentage of state of charge, it develops some sort of a memory that this is the lowest possible charge it can attain. Let's take an example. In early age nickel cadmium batteries, uh, they, were, they were starting to use them in satellites. And what was observed is because of the predictable path of the satellite around the Earth, there was a set pattern of charging and discharging of these batteries. So when the solar uh, rays were, were, were hitting the solar panels of the satellite, the cell was charging. And when, it was, uh, when the satellite was under the Earth's shadow, the cell was discharging. Now let's take an example where the cell is charging up to 100% uh, state of charge and discharging, partially discharging to 30%. And this is a repetitive pattern because it's sitting on a satellite. So day after day, it's seen that when it's discharged to 30% and then charged back up, the, the nickel cadmium cell develops a memory that 30% is the lowest possible charge it can attain. Now you might be thinking, how does a cell have a memory, right? So the way it works in terms of the chemical reactions that are happening inside it, if we're taking the example of a nickel cadmium cell, in nickel cadmium, we are uh, breaking down, uh, breaking down cadmium, cadmium crystals into cadmium, cadmium hydroxide and reforming cadmium crystals. Now, these cadmium crystals can form as small crystals or larger crystals, and that makes a world of difference. Now, in moderate conditions or in moderate charging and discharging currents, what should happen is that the nickel cadmium crystals, or, or sorry, the cadmium crystals that are formed uh, should form as smaller crystals. But the laws of thermodynamics make it such that in a high energy and high pressure environment, such as inside a cell, the crystals collase together to form, the smaller crystals collase together to form larger crystals. And these larger crystals then are harder to dissolve back into the original cadmium hydroxide state which in turn is seen as a, a barrier to discharge. And this is what is termed as the memory, as what is termed as the memory effect. So coming back to our example, the satellite is hosting a nickel cadmium battery and that is being partially discharged to 30% day over day over day, right? And so every day, 70% of the cadmium crystals are being formed and dissolved, but the leftover 30% are, are collasing together uh, into larger crystals. And this leftover 30% is what is causing the memory effect, as in these, the leftover 30% is, uh, is harder to discharge. Now let's talk about the memory effect in lithium ion batteries. From the late 1900s, when lithium ion batteries first came out, there was a lot of marketing done around the fact that there is no uh, presence of memory effect in lithium ion batteries. Recent research has shown that there is a similar type of effect that's also seen in lithium ion batteries. Although there are certain differences as to what we had uh, just talked about in nickel cadmium batteries. So in lithium ion batteries, what is seen is that there is a memory write cycle and a memory release cycle. The tests that were performed in research labs have confirmed this effect in LFP type cells and LTO type cells, so lithium iron phosphate and lithium titanate type cells. 
And what's seen is that in the memory write cycle, which is a partial discharge cycle, that is the memory write cycle and the memory release cycle is the following full uh, charge discharge cycle. So a memory write cycle causes a small blip in voltage inside the uh, voltage versus state of charge curve of the memory release cycle. So if we take an example of a memory write cycle being a 30% charge followed by a 30% discharge. Now at the 30% point is what is important. The following memory release cycle, which is, would be the full charge discharge cycle, would have a small blip in the voltage at 30% SOC. And this has been seen in LFP and LTO type cells. So how does this small blip in the voltage versus SOC curve affect our performance? Well, if there is a battery management system that is measuring the state of charge of this cell based on voltage, then it can throw off the readings, especially if the, the curve, the discharge curve of the battery is flat. Now let's understand a few things here that we've talked about. Now, first thing, let's talk about what is a flat discharge curve. Well, in the batteries, in say an LFP type cell, state of charge versus OCV, open circuit voltage, is a way to detect what is the change in voltage based on your state of charge. So if we are at 4.2 volts, we can say that the cell is fully charged. Whereas when we're at 2.8 volts, we can say that the cell is completely discharged. But between those, is it just a straight line? No, there is a curve that the voltage follows based on how much charge is remaining inside the cell. A flat curve means that the voltage does not change as much in the middle. So there will be a flat portion of the curve and then there will be exponential portions of the curve. Where So exponential portions of the curve will be when voltage changes uh, rapidly based on state of charge and flat portions of the curve would be when the voltage changes not that much based on state of charge. Now the flat portion of the curve where the voltage remains almost the same while we're changing the state of charge is what could be affected by the memory effect. So if we do a memory write cycle which is a 30% charge followed by a 30% discharge, note that this is an example. It could You could do a 50% charge followed by a 50% discharge. So the blip that's caused at 30% or 50%, if that happens to be in the flat portion of the curve, that can throw off your state of charge readings that the BMS is using for all types of computations. So that is how the recent research has shown the pre presence of memory effect in lithium ion batteries. And this can be as small, the memory writing cycle can be as small as one partial discharge cycle, where though the, the blip in voltage would be very small if it's just one writing cycle. If there's multiple writing cycles, then the blip is uh, seen to be more. So the blip increases, the blip in voltage in the memory releasing cycle is more if there are multiple partial discharges to that state of charge percentage. Or if the current that um, was used to charge and discharge the battery is more in the memory writing cycle. Also, the blip in voltage in the memory releasing cycle is seen to be more. So now that we understand the memory effect in lithium ion batteries, the next thing to think about is how do we get around this issue? Is this a showstopper for us or is there a way to get around it? Well, the first thing is to clearly understand this effect in the particular cells that you're using. So it'll help to perform a similar experiment on your side on your chosen cells, where you perform a memory writing cycle, which is a partial charge and discharge cycle, say to 50% state of charge. And uh, you're recording, you're doing a memory writing cycle, followed by a resting period where there is no uh, charge and discharge in the cell and that is followed by a memory releasing cycle which is a full charge and discharge. 
So you're doing this over and over and over. So first time you're doing one memory writing cycle followed by a memory releasing cycle. Then you're doing five memory writing cycles followed by a memory releasing cycle. Then you're doing 10 or 20 or 30 memory writing cycles, which is again, just a partial charge to 50 and a partial discharge back down. Uh, and then you're seeing its effect on your subsequent memory releasing cycle, which is your full charge and discharge cycle. So when you see that and you see, uh, you're able to see a blip in voltage, you can, you have two options. One is to uh, record that blip or that effect of that blip. So what does that blip look like? Is it a delta of 100 millivolts? Is it a delta of 10 millivolts, 20 millivolts in your readings? Uh, take that into effect in your algorithms that if there is a partial discharge cycle, we do a lookup uh, to say that if the partial discharge cycle previously was 30% uh, charge discharged 10 times, then this is the estimated blip in voltage uh, encountered. Or if it's 50%, so basically it's a lookup, right? So you're performing the experiment before time in your, uh, in your lab environment, and then you're storing these um, inaccuracies or this effect inside your BMS that's running in your final product. So now your final product has a way of correcting based on the memory effect, um, based on the lab experiments that you've done. So this is the lookup method that you can uh, implement in, um, in your products. Um, so first thing, let's come back to it. So first thing is figuring out if your cells have, um, have them uh, show the memory effect, which can be done through experiments. The second is if you do see memory effect, uh, you have two options. One of them that we have talked about is implementing a lookup table. And that lookup table is helping the final product figure out the effect of, the mem um, of this memory effect based on the previous lab experiments you've done. The other way of doing it uh, is, uh, is what we can do is reduce the dependence of state of charge on purely on voltage. And that can be done by mixing, having a mix uh, algorithm of state of charge of depending on voltage as well as Coulomb counting. So if, you, if your state of charge uh, depends on both voltage and Coulomb counting, then this error, uh, the effect of this error can be reduced based on the comparison of the state of charge calculation between the two algorithms. So these are two ways to get around the memory effect that is been, has been seen in recent uh, studies. Uh, in lithium ion as well, but it's right now only been shown in LFP, lithium iron phosphate, and LTO type cells, but it doesn't hurt at all to improve your algorithms and improve your uh, battery management system by tr trying out this lab experiment for your type of selected cells and your end product. So that uh, we talked about today, we talked about the memory effect, uh, what it is in nickel cadmium cells, and we talked about uh, its presence in lithium ion and how we can get around and make our products better. Thanks for tuning in. This is Akshay Gill, and this is the Battery Masters podcast sponsored by MakerMax.